On today's episode, the fate of Starliner is revealed, a Scottish spaceport explodes onto the scene, and the dream of asteroid mining is still alive. NASA has confirmed that the Boeing CST-100 Starliner will be making its long-awaited return to the Earth in September, but the vehicle will be doing so without her crew on board. The two astronauts in question, Butch Wilmore and Sonny Williams, will instead be returning home in February 2025 aboard a SpaceX Dragon capsule. In essence, this means that the primary objective of Starliner's test flight will not be accomplished. Boeing will not be able to demonstrate the safe transport of a crew from the Earth to space and then back again. NASA Executive Director Jim Free told reporters on Saturday, quote, Spaceflight is risky, even at its safest and most routine. A test flight by nature is neither safe nor routine. The decision to keep Butch and Sonny aboard the International Space Station and bring Boeing's Starliner home uncrewed is the result of our commitment to safety. The heart of the problem remains with Starliner's thruster system. NASA and Boeing engineers have put in a significant effort to try and understand the multiple thruster failures that occurred on Starliner's approach to the ISS back in early June. They do know that a Teflon seal inside the hypergolic thruster was what caused the failure in performance. During the intricate docking procedure with the space station, the seal overheated and expanded, which then restricted the flow of oxidizer into the thruster's combustion chamber. But the question still remains as to why these seals are overheating in the first place, and if the same problem could happen again as Starliner is setting up for re-entry into Earth's atmosphere. NASA and Boeing remain pretty vague on this subject, with NASA only saying that there are uncertainties with the thrusters that couldn't be resolved to the agency's satisfaction. Jim Free attempted to elaborate on this point by saying, quote, That uncertainty remains in our understanding of the physics going on in the thrusters. So where we're at right now is that we know the point of failure, but not the root cause behind that failure. Starliner might return home with no thruster issues at all, or just as well might end up having more trouble getting back than it did going up. No one knows, and that's a level of risk that NASA isn't comfortable with when it comes to human spaceflight. This point was reinforced by NASA Associate Administrator for Space Operations Ken Bowersox, who was a long-serving astronaut himself and actually one of the crew members on board the space station during the Shuttle Columbia disaster, so there are very few people who have been as close to tragedy in spaceflight as him. Bowersox told reporters, quote, For me, one of the really important factors is that we just don't know how much we can use the thrusters on the way back home before we encounter a problem. Bowersox went on to explain, with more time we might have gotten a lot smarter, but we're just at the point where we need to bring Starliner home. That need is related to the scarcity of docking ports on the American side of the ISS. There are only two spots to park a spaceship. One is occupied by a SpaceX Dragon and the other by Starliner. If NASA were to have the Crew-8 Dragon leave first, then the remaining personnel on ISS would be left with only the Starliner as an emergency lifeboat. That's not good. So Starliner has to shove off before the Crew-9 mission arrives at the ISS, which is now scheduled to launch September 24th, and will arrive with two empty seats for Butch and Sonny to ride home. If an emergency situation were to happen between now and then, NASA has a contingency plan worked out that Butch and Sonny would strap themselves into the pressurized cargo hold on the Dragon capsule and everyone would ride home together. So, in addition to the continued beating of the dead horse that is Boeing's reputation, this whole Starliner debacle has created more than its fair share of logistical nightmares for the space agency and their astronauts. Speaking of Boeing, the company did not provide a representative of their own for the most recent update, but Ken Bowersox did answer a question on their behalf about the safety and reliability of the vehicle. Bowersox told reporters, quote, They believe in their vehicle, and they'd be willing to bring a crew home on it. 
And while NASA obviously disagrees with that sentiment in the short term, the administration did make a point to voice their unwavering support for Boeing and the Starliner program. Jim Free told reporters that he expects Starliner to fly again with astronauts on board. And when asked how certain he was of that outcome, Free simply replied, 100%. In a fiery blast, the first stage of a rocket exploded at the UK's new Shetland spaceport, putting a sudden stop to what should have been a huge step forward in European space exploration. This dramatic event happened during a test by rocket factory Augsburg, a German company on the verge of launching the UK's first vertical takeoff rocket into orbit. The test, which was part of a series leading up to the inaugural launch, was meant to ignite nine engines of the RFA-1 rocket. However, things took a catastrophic turn. As the engines roared to life, large flames shot horizontally from the base of the rocket, followed by an explosion that engulfed the entire structure in a fireball. Thankfully, due to strict safety protocols, the site was evacuated beforehand and no one was injured. The launch pad, although damaged, was safe and secured, preventing further disaster. So, what went wrong? The explosion is a significant setback for RFA, which was just weeks away from its first orbital launch attempt. The rocket's first stage was destroyed, a booster intended for that very launch. The incident highlights the inherent risks of pushing the boundaries in the high-stakes world of space exploration. RFA, known for its iterative testing philosophy, is now working closely with authorities to investigate the cause, hoping to bounce back quickly. RFA is a rising star in the European space industry, aiming to democratize access to space with their cost-effective, high-performance rockets. Their flagship rocket is the RFA-1. RFA-1 is a three-stage orbital launch vehicle, measuring 30 meters in height and 2 meters in diameter. Designed for cost-effective space access, it utilizes kerosene as a fuel along with liquid oxygen. The first stage is powered by nine Helix stage combustion cycle engines. Each engine contributes to the rocket's ability to deliver payloads of up to 1,600 kilograms to low Earth orbit and 850 kilograms to polar orbit. The second stage features a single Helix VAC engine optimized for vacuum conditions, while the third stage, known as Redshift, is powered by a Phoenix engine and developed in part with ESA funding. The Redshift stage can precisely deliver payloads across a variety of orbits, from LEO to GTO with the capability of sending up to 150 kilos on a trajectory to the moon. RFA-1 is also engineered for serial production incorporating many commercial off-the-shelf components, which drastically reduces manufacturing costs. This approach allows RFA to offer launches at highly competitive prices of approximately 3 million euros per mission, significantly lower than many of its competitors, making it a promising player in the small satellite launch market. Think about how cool it would be to mine asteroids and unlock the infinite wealth of space. This isn't just science fiction anymore, it's a rapidly developing field and it's been capturing the imagination of scientists, entrepreneurs, and investors for a long time. In the 2010s, several companies launched bold plans to mine asteroids, fueled by significant investments and ambitious visions of making space the next frontier of resource extraction. However, they quickly faced the harsh realities of space, enormous costs, complex technical and engineering challenges, and the daunting task of providing commercial viability. These obstacles led some companies to shut down and increased skepticism about whether asteroid mining could ever become a viable industry. Yet, the dream persists, with new players continuing the quest. Companies like Astroforge, TransAstra, and Origin Space are actively developing technologies to make mining a reality. Astro Forge, in particular, has been recently making headlines. On August 13th, the company's co-founder announced they had successfully raised $40 million in a Series A funding, bringing their total to $55 million raised to date. This new investment will support their next two missions as they push the boundaries of what's possible in space mining. That said, a healthy dose of skepticism is needed. While raising $55 million is a significant achievement, it's still a tiny figure compared to what would really be needed to successfully develop, operate, and commercialize anything that makes financial sense in asteroid mining. Astro Forge's journey so far shows both the potential and the risks of this emerging industry. 
Their first mission, Brocker 1, launched in April 2023, was intended to demonstrate their space-based refinery technology. While they successfully deployed the satellite and maintained communication until May 2024, they were unable to activate the refinery payload, marking the mission as incomplete in terms of its primary objectives. The company's second mission, Odin, aims to make history as the first commercial deep space mission to gather images of a metal-rich asteroid. However, this mission hasn't been without its own hurdles. In March 2024, the original Odin vehicle failed vibrating tests due to a manufacturing defect in a key structural component. This setback forced Astro Forge to make a critical decision. Rather than continuing with third-party components, they accelerated the development of an in-house vehicle, originally planned for a later mission and committed to designing, building, and testing in just seven months. By vertically integrating their spacecraft development and focusing on efficient, cost-effective extraction methods, they're looking to break through the barriers that have previously derailed efforts. Asteroid mining has the potential to reshape our future, but it's far from an easy task. Companies like Astro Forge are leading the charge in this exciting yet challenging industry pushing the boundaries of what's possible in space. While their progress is promising, the road ahead is long and much more is needed before this ambitious dream can become a reality.